We are going to talk about our research improving gradient boosting in CINCH to age GRE inference from single cell trunks plutomics. This is an extended research of a paper, CINCH inference of robust interpretable gene regulatory networks from single cell and spatial trunks plutomics. Uh, to improve the model and the quantitative evaluation of the role of gradient boosting decision tree model in CINCH. Understanding how diseases work is crucial for developing effective diagnostics and treatment, but these events often involve hundreds, even thousands of genes working together in integrated ways. To simplify these interactions, we need to map out the gene regulatory networks, the wiring diagram that control which genes is turned on and off. Until recently, we could only analyze these networks in bulk data, a giant mix of all the cells in a tissue. However, with tools like single cell RNA sequence, we can see which genes are active in each cell types and how they influence each other. This gives us a much clearer picture of how disease emerge and progress, offering insight into specific cell types and pathways that may be driving the illness. The model aims to extract new knowledge purely from given single cell data without some known interactions. This approach is good for detecting new important interactions between genes. While several methods have been suggested that couldn't predict networks with high accuracy, this is because this kind of data is very large, highly sparse, and difficult in predicting edge direction. To handle these difficulties, the CINCH employs three approaches, supercell budding, gradient boosting, and conditional mutual information. With these approaches, CINCH realized robust, interpretable high accuracy prediction with improved computing speed. Here is one of the figures presented in the paper. Since model work shows higher prediction accuracy compared to former models, in a variety of benchmarks consistently. However, in the paper, while explicitly describing the model of supercell bugging and conditional mutual information, the contribution of GDBT was not quantitatively evaluated. So, to suggest other potential machine learning algorithms to work and discover contribution of GDBT in the CINCH model, we tried other two GDBT algorithms namely RightGBM and XGBoost, and evaluated the performance of accuracy and implementing in time. We also introduced another feature extracting method from machine learning algorithms called permutation importance. Note that we tried to apply the CatBoost model as well, but it wasn't skipped due to incompatibility with the Dask library, which is related to distributed running using in Cinch. All source code modified and data sets used were taken from the Yang Labs GitHub repository. For part one of our project, the main code that we modified were the helper functions to build the GRNs. Um, these helper functions train the machine learning model to predict the gene expression levels of each gene in um, the test set and also perform perturb-seq validation, which is a process in which we inhibit a gene to see how it affects other genes' expression levels. After replacing Scikit-Learn's gradient boosting regressor, which is Singe's original gradient boosting algorithm, with XGBoost and LightGBM, we subsequently identified the edges and used those edges to construct subnetworks. Then we merged those subnetworks together and use them to calculate the predictive accuracy of the final networks compared to the perturbed genes. All three models use the same default hyperparameter values, the only difference being LightGBM with an additional importance type hyperparameter, which we specified to gain to see, the, um, to see which features contribute more to the overall improvement in the predictive model's performance. So the second part of our study involves replacing um, Singe's built-in genie importance feature with permutation importance um, in the original XGBoost and LightGBM versions of the Singe model developed in part one. 
So the motivation behind replacing the Gini importance feature with permutation importance is that permutation importance may uh, provide more accurate quantitative descriptions of the uh, importance of a feature in predicting gene expression for certain genes in the um, captured by the model. And so gene importance lacks robustness when it comes to comparing similar features, whereas permutation imp importance allows for this. Um, gene importance doesn't factor in the contributions of other features uh, when calculating the importance of a feature, and so permutation importance may allow for this. Um, to evaluate these models' performances, we used the PerturbSeq, Alzheimer's datasets, and Pavaluxi, ETAL, uh, le leukemia datasets, and we also use the area under the receiver operating characteristic, AUROC for short, as a metric for evaluation. So to give a broad overview of how the AUROC is calculated, we first have to ascertain the degree of change, which is a um, measure of how capable the model is of distinguishing between classes. So using um, these degrees of change, if it falls above a certain threshold, then the model is able to um, predict a positive class. Otherwise, the model predicts a negative class. Um, then we compare these predictions to the actual values to get the true positive rate and false positive rates. Using these true false positive rate pairings, um, we can then construct the ROC curve, which is the receiver operating characteristic curve. And the greater the area under this curve, the more effective our model will be at distinguishing between existent edges and non-existent ones. Finally, we performed a time efficiency analysis on these different SINGE versions. And to do that, we extrapolated the time it took to build subnetworks, and we were able to graphically visualize their distributions on a box plot. We'll be discussing the result of our research. As you can see in graph A, B, and C, we have a side-by-side -side comparison of the gradient boosting regressor, SGBoost, and light GBM. The metrics will be chosen for this evaluation is AUROC. Notably, SGBoost stands out with a AUROC of 0.904, which is higher than GBDT and light GBM. The higher, the higher AUROC score achieved by SGBoost indicates the superior predictive power and reliability of SGBoost in our analysis, highlighting its efficiency as a machine learning algorithm. While accuracy is important, we also need to take a look at the time efficiency of the model. This visual summarizes the time distribution of these three models. The box plots capture the spread and the skewness of the runtime data across these models. You will notice that the green triangle on each box plot represents the main runtime. For GBDT, its main time is notably low compared to the other two models. This suggests a constantly faster performance. The overarching takeaways here is that, in terms of runtime, GBDT still holds the crown for the lowest overall runtime. However, as we've seen in previous analysis, while GBDT might be the fastest, SGBoost has provided us with the best performance in terms of predictive accuracy. Let's see the results of our second project, which is to replace the Gini importance with permutation importance. And let's first see the A AUROC curves of the permutation importance using GBDT XGBoost and light GBM respectively. And we can see that the uh, AUROC scores sl slightly outperforms the permutation importance scores. And then, and then this is the box plot that shows the time efficiency for permutation importance. And we can see that for permutation importance, um, XGBoost displayed a runtime distribution comparable to other two models. And if we place the, um, place the Gini importance and permutation importance box plot side by side, 
we can see that while both models they yield the similar AUROC scores, uh, the Gini importance outperforms permutation importance in time efficiency, reaffirming its importance in SINGE. Okay, so in conclusion, some of our meaningful discoveries involve, first of all, ActiBoost has shown a significantly higher predictive accuracy in terms, in terms of its AUROC score. We assume that this is because ActiBoost actually has a mecha mechanism-wise um, edge in terms of its, uh, its safeguard procedure to overfitting potentials. It utilizes two types of regularization penalties, Lasso L1 and Ridge L2. Both these regularization penalties will actually like sort of normalize the uh, result matrix or make, make it sparse as well as very uh, intact to, pre to prevent potential overfitting possibilities. And also ActiBoost has a built-in early, early termination ter uh, feature that allows it to terminate the algorithm once it finds out that the uh, performance on a validated set has dropped. So basically it actually safeguards overfitting possibilities and false like positive rates. And the second meaningful discovery is that light GBM has a really good uh, time efficiency compared to G both GBDT and XGBoost. In fact, XGBoost has shown to have a uh, slowest time complexity in multiple cases. We assume that this is because light GBM utilizes a leaf tree growth strategy, gradient based one size sampling, and inclusive feature bind bounding. And as you can see, probably in our previous two slides, there is a trade off between ERC score, basically predictive accuracy and time efficiency. And this is sort of the um, key finding of our project. As, as you can see, probably the GBDT model actually is in the middle of both. So basically GBDT has a, has a moderate um, predictive accuracy and it has a moderate time efficiency as well, which makes it sort of the optimal model to use for Cinch in, in terms of implementation. And some of the limitations of our project include lack of generalizability. Basically, it's because we, we benchmark the data sets, and the data sets we're using are actually like sort of restricted to some of, uh, some of the pre-processed uh, data sets. And also, the computational methods might be improved significantly, because we only have access to our personal computers, and uh, the DAS supported model may work better for distributed learning and, and more testing. And the third, actually another key takeaway here is the non-tree based machine learning algorithms are actually a little bit more, uh, I could say versatile in terms of, uh, in, in, terms of the, in terms of the compatibility to permutation importance. As you can see, permutation importance has a greater uh, accurate prediction accuracy score in terms in G, uh, GDB, GBDT and Lie GBM compared to the original Gini importance uh, feature. And this is because First of all, it's very exhaustive, and second of all, it, it actually it, it utilizes a lot of like um, iterations and stuff. So, which makes it also time co time complexity wise costly. So, if we can maybe figure out a feature importance from arbitrary machine learning model uh, using these non tree based models, maybe they will be they will outperform those original like tree based models. And these are the potential improvements and limitations of the study. And um, Nonetheless, there's, a, there's still a lot more things that we can study about Cinch as well as GRN. So still, we believe our project is very meaningful and uh, thank you for listening to our presentation. And here's our biblio bibliography and uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask us on Slack or in person.